<laughs> Hi, and welcome again to the Path of Profit podcast. We're trying not to laugh here because we're just being things silly. We're, we're both kind we're of totally silly, silly sometimes. Anyways, lovely to welcome the visibility whisperer today, Michelle Whitehart, who's coming to us from um, Malibu. Bel Air. Bel Air, very nice, with a beautiful batik behind her showing off the visibility. And by the way, this is Brad Dobson. I'm Dr. Manette Ryer, oh, yeah. and we're actually the host of the Path to Profit podcast. We got off on a silly foot today. He didn't even introduce us. Good idea. <laughs> so there you have it, folks. <laughs> we tend to record a bunch of these, you know, kind of back to back, and we do get kind of silly, but also we know Michelle really well, and so we tend to be probably a little bit more relaxed than maybe would be on some of our other podcasts. But Michelle, we are super excited to have you here talking about visibility. So I'm going to share our quote for the day, tell you guys a little bit about Michelle, why we invited her onto the podcast today, and then we'll dive right into the conversation and some really just great insights and tips on video, why you should use it, how to get started. So it'll be silly, we promise, probably a little funny, and definitely super practical. But our quote for today is from Woody Allen. And Woody Allen, as many of you know, said that 80% of success is showing up. And people often ask me how I've been as successful in business as I have. It's because I just keep showing up over and over and over again and learning and getting better at what are the right places to show up. And Michelle's going to share today how you can manufacture that visibility with video. So it's not always you having to show up in person, but how you can do it online as well. So Michelle has a pretty impressive background, and she doesn't always share some of the amazing things that she's done in her lifetime, but she has taught and inspired hundreds of conscious entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers how to get past their fear of being seen on video and how to make simple, effective videos just using their smartphones. I'm one of those students, by the way. She has 20 plus years of experience in the film industry as a filmmaker and an editor on feature films and documentaries. She's made her own documentary, at least one that I know of, if not more. Plus she has 14 years of movement and embodied leadership coaching. And she combines all of her technical, tactical skills with her love of movement, her love of empowerment, her love of supporting people in getting really visible. So super excited to have you here. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Manette and Brad. It's great to be here with both of you. It's always a blast to talk to you no matter what the case. And for so I always share, Michelle, a little bit about how I met the people because so far in our podcast, we've had mostly people that we know or that we've connected with. And Michelle and I met through a coaching program that we both participated in, and we have both taken each other's classes and workshops and seminars and participated in other things. But I just want to say that what I have always loved about you was your fearlessness and being visible, even when it was hard. You were standing up in front of these groups of hundreds of people to take the microphone and speak. You were one of the first that I saw out there on Periscope when Periscope was all the rage. You're doing Facebook Live pretty consistently, not to mention recorded videos. So I really honor you for walking your talk. Thank you, Manette. Nice. Appreciate that. Plus, she's a really good dancer. Yeah. She came to our, our Path to Profit Summit and led everybody in the in the body and movement part yes. of things, and she rocks it. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, Brad. He's like, totally does. You got to play another song faster. <laughs> <laughs> so, can you just tell us a little bit about your journey before we dive into the questions? Like, how did you get to where you are in your business today? Well. Uh, as you were saying, I did work in the film industry for 20 plus years and I was really committed. I, I got into it because I wanted to spread empowering images of women because I really didn't think there were that many, you know, 30 years ago. It just yeah. felt like I didn't see enough of it. And I, knew, and I discovered how potent the medium of film was in, at McGill University and then thought, well, that's what I want to do. And then proceeded to work in the industry, but realize how hard it was also to make your own films. And so by the end of 20 plus years, I, I just knew, well, I, I made my documentary about the high priestess of um, and Hedwana, who was a real live woman who lived, you know, 2300 BC. And I felt like, well, I guess I've done what I was supposed to do. And, you know, Hollywood is not that easy to get great films about women. So I think I'm complete and then was in the somatic movement world and 
trying to make that work and help women get, you know, their shackles off their, you know, their patterning that was holding them back. And then discovered that YouTube had all these like coaches making videos of themselves. And I was like, wow, that looks fun. And <laughs> I, I was sort of like intrigued, like how can somebody just go be on video like that? Like to me, it was always actresses and actors that were on video from the film industry. And so I started investigating that and, and got guided to bring the two together to have women be in their bodies and then make, learn how to make videos with their iPhones. You know, it was like, oh, wow. And it sounds really? so easy too. Low, low barrier to entry, right? Right, exactly. Anyone can do it now. So that's sort of the, how it all started. And, and, and the, the thing that I discovered though was that it isn't easy to be on video. It was easier for me to make the videos, but I didn't know how to be on video. Mm. And that's when I realized, oh, wow, this is um, something I'm sure I'm not the only one going through. And working through all of that, using my somatic background with people that I knew could lead me that way, yeah. um, made me realize, wow, this is what I really want to do, is help them be seen and help them spread their message. So what are the, just offhand, what, what would be the top one or three reasons, especially for women, that you, you see them really struggle with to step to actually do what we're doing right now, which is to, to turn on a camera and yeah. talk in front of it. What, what blocks them? What stops them? Well, w the number one is how they look, mm. you know, whether they have extra weight or they just don't like the way they look. They, you know, don't like their wrinkles. Don't like, you know, the, the camera can be kind of harsh. You know, if you don't have the right lighting, uh, it tends to amplify the things that you are most struggling with. Mm -hmm. um, that's one thing. Another thing is this sort of feeling like, well, what do I have to say that's so important that anyone would want to listen to? That was my big thing. It's like, so both of those are self value, right? Yes. Do you yes. find they also struggle with how they sound on video? Like they don't like the sound of their own voice. That happens too. Absolutely. That does happen for sure. And, um, you know, these are all things that actually are just, um, they're, they're, they're on a thought base. They're not really reality. And so yeah. it's something that can be changed. Right. But it's so, you know, there's this feeling like, oh, I'm bragging, you know, if I'm out on video and, um, you know, uh, or I'm trying, I'm needy, I'm trying to get attention, you know. So there's the, all the introverts who feel that way, you know. Not all the extroverts necessarily feel that way. But those are, those are some of the main reasons. Well, those are uh, They're good ones. I, I get it. I mean, those, even, are, those are pretty significant blocks. Yeah. So it sounds easy to say low barrier to entry. You just turn the phone on and you're right. live in front of people, but then you got to right. get past those mental blocks first. Right? It, exactly. Like it's a low technical barrier, I think is what you're saying, and, and financial barrier now, which so, it was a big barrier for me to make films. Right you know, and spread those. But now it's like for coaches who want to be seen on video, it's a lot of internal stuff that's really in the way. It's not really a tech. Some women will say, oh, I'm not technical, you know, and they'll use the technology excuse because it can be overwhelming. It can, I understand it can. You know, if you know nothing about this stuff, it can yeah. seem like it's a big deal, even though it isn't. Right. But so I'm, I'm curious because we've talked about reasons why women don't do it, but why are you encouraging coaches, not just women, but coaches to do video? Why is video so important in today's marketplace? Well, it's getting more and more like mainstream everywhere. Like even, you know, Zappos and different companies have videos with their products and they've yeah. found that people buy when they see a video. Like it just boosts the conversions when there's video involved. And it's particularly important for coaches, I believe, because most coaches nowadays, uh, you know, there's a transformational element to the work that they're offering. And you want to trust a coach before you get to know them. And mm -hmm. coaches can work with people from around the world. It doesn't matter where you are. So basically video is a great tool to, be out there attracting clients from all around the world for you. And the only way they're ever going to want to work with you is if they 
get to know you and like you and trust you. And video is the only way they may ever get to meet you. Yeah. You know, for a lot of people who are leveraging their time and reaching thousands and, you know, hundreds of thousands of, of potential clients, they really use video to get that kind of visibility. And so I, I know for me, um, I mean, you can, you can give me a wonderful sales page that has all sorts of great text on it and, and, and maybe some audio or things like that, but really I don't get that connection until I, I have a visual, a audio visual connection. Right. It just, um, it's just not the same. It's not the same. I totally agree with you. And one of my, you know, hesitancies, even though I do some video, we're conscious of needing to do a lot more, is that I don't like to watch online videos. I'm not a YouTuber. I'm not that person who I, I will read in the whole sales page. I will make kind of quick snap decisions or maybe watch. I'm one of those ones that I'll watch 30 seconds, but I won't be online. I don't like to do video trainings. Mm -hmm. you know, I like to give them all the time, but I, I don't like to watch them. I'd way rather have audio where I can be focused and, and taking notes. So for me, it's a learning style thing as well, yeah. because yeah. I don't, I don't use video that way. And, and yet I know how important it is and how valuable it is for our business. And so remembering that it's all about what my clients want, not about what I want. Right? So it's not, it doesn't matter how I buy, it only matters how they buy. And we do attract a lot of millennials who are super into videos. So understanding who your clients are, I think is really impactful. And it, so I'm, I'm curious how you went kind of from filmmaker and somatic movement to video coaching, because there were so many directions that you could have gone with this. But, mm -hmm. you know, why is it that you're so called to help women be more visible? Well, you know, I think it's because for myself, when I was growing up and for a big chunk of my time, you know, adult life, I was hiding mm -hmm. and um, it was, I was, you know, happy in the dark rooms, the editing dark, you know, the rooms, those cozy dark rooms that I was in. And, but I knew that I was hiding. Yeah. And that I was coasting, you know, and there was just that feeling of like, I'm biding my time. Mm. And that's not a good way to live. No, it's not. And I, it became more aware to me as I was doing the movement work and getting more into my body and feeling more. And it's like, there was so much frozen inside of me that could handle the long period of coasting. Yeah. You know, there's a numbness going on, but the more I did the movement work, the more you know, a voice wanted to come out mm, nice. and yeah. there was so much terror in speaking and, and having an opinion. And so, but there was also this desire to do it and to be seen and to own that rather than to, you know, it's like you, I had grown up thinking that if I got A's, I would get all the attention I needed, but then to actually put myself out there, I was starting to realize that's what I was going to have to do if I was going to actually make a difference anywhere. So I really, come from that place of I know there are so many women who have really amazing things to share and um, but maybe just feel like well it's okay if I don't and there, there's just of that sort of shyer mindset mm -hmm. um, and it's yeah. not just shy women it's just well, I think it's lack of confidence it's that being afraid of bragging all those things that you talked about at exactly the all stop us. And I think women of a certain generation, it's even harder for us to brag, you know, than younger generations as well. Yeah, that's well, true too. And I mean, frankly, you just use the word terror. You didn't use a soft word. You use the mm -hmm. word outright terror of getting on, on video. And, and so, you know, folks that, that have that level of fear, they need help. Mm -hmm. They need help to get, get past that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that terror, you know, a lot of people say it's like past life burning, being burned at the cross type of stuff. It's kind of got a woo woo vibe to it, but yeah, kind of, <laughs> I, I just, I, I know a lot of women relate to like deep terror to ex being seen and ex speaking your truth. Yeah. Speaking your truth and standing in your, your own leadership. Yeah. So how do I get started? I would say, and that's a two part question, right? How do I get started from both the mindset perspective as well as the technology perspective? Because clearly what I hear you saying is I have to 
get over the mindset stuff first right. because the technology stuff is actually pretty simple. Yes, yes, absolutely, yes. Yes, the, the, the most important thing that I feel helps really accelerate this process is to start feeling the terror. Mm. You know, um, doing videos that are just for yourself, no one else is going to see them, and start, first of all, creating neural pathways of, oh, this is something that is becoming a life skill now. Right. To be able to use your video camera is like using a computer almost. Right. It's that useful now to your business, you know, primarily. Oh, I love so, that. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's just, it's so, there's so many different ways you would use video in your business. So first starting to use it like, oh, you and me, we got to get to know each other. So you start, you know, playing with it and then just watching yourself in the privacy of your own home and really tracking the thoughts that are going on as you're watching, because these are patterns of thinking that you need to become aware of first to right. really start to ship them. Yeah. You know, you can muscle through it, but it'll bounce back and there'll be a time where you're, you can't, you know? So really just receiving what you're feeling. And that's, that's the somatic piece that I help people with is just first to really start connecting to how you feel and breathing through it. Right. And yeah, notice I love that. Terror. I love that. And um, I remember when I was just starting out speaking and everybody on live stages and everybody said, well, you should, you know, give video of yourself and watch it back. And I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to watch myself. And then I actually had paid someone to take a video. At a, I was at a conference and he was video, videoing the conference and he gave me my clip back. I said the word right, like every three words. It was so painful to watch the video clip and yet such a powerful learning moment of noticing those silly little speech patterns that we fall into, whether it's um or right. Or awesome. Or awesome. He <laughs> says I say awesome way too much, but I do it in my private clients, not on our podcast. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's just that uh, noticing what are those little things that are going to make us feel even more nervous, whether yes. it's live or on video. So watching ourselves on video can right. be so educational. Yes, and, and there's a reason that you were probably saying right a lot is that there was some nervousness. Yes. And so if you can work with the nervousness and feel it more rather than try to skip over it and, and, and pretend you're not nervous, you know what I mean? The, yes. It helps get you back in the body, which allows you to calm down more and speak better. And you actually, saw me at my first Path to Profit Summit. I was so nervous, and especially right before I made our offer, right? I think I said to the whole room, I'm feeling really nervous right now. It was awesome. And there's something about just acknowledging that, that it's like, whoosh, right? That it releases the, the need to try to hide it. Yes. And I think it creates what we want on video, which is the vulnerability piece and the connection piece, right? That it's just, we're just all human beings having a human experience. But I loved what you said about the process of while you're watching yourself on video to be listening to your thoughts and becoming conscious of what the limiting beliefs are. In fact, Brad and I were out for a walk this morning and we're both doing some personal growth work right now and that whole idea of limiting beliefs. And when you recognize, as opposed to looking at it as a limiting belief, just notice that it's a core belief and that a belief is not truth. I think that's that, that you know, mindset shift. A or belief not is not reality. Exactly. Yes, that's awesome. Absolutely. And <clears throat> you were saying also, um, when you say to the room, I'm feeling nervous, like, yeah. that's like you also allowing yourself to be nervous to yeah. the point that you would include everyone in that and that's mm -hmm. like it's like you're your own worst enemy more than the audience oh yeah for and sure so if you allow yourself to admit that you're nervous it's like you saying to yourself oh yeah i'm nervous it's okay that i'm nervous i'm even going to tell everyone else i'm nervous yeah right. you know it's yeah a it's a great point leap. that's an awesome leap that you did i thought that was brilliant so we forgot to unplug the phone. It's one of our things on our to-do list, unplug the phone ringing in the background. So sorry, everybody, for the phone ringing. That's all right. They probably can't hear it. <laughs> it's so far away. <laughs> Good. I'm glad it sounds far away. So can you talk about the movement piece and how the movement piece and the getting into our body can help us show up on video differently, more powerfully, just 
what's the connection there? And yeah. what are maybe some tips and strategies, you know, for people who are listening or watching, what could we physically do before making a video to help with that piece? Great, great question. Yes. <clears throat> um, for me, I have discovered and <clears throat> seen in videos that people who are talking just from their head and really very focused on giving content are cutting, you know, their whole body off from the neck down and you can feel like they're just more interested in information than in actually connecting with you yeah in the audience and so you can't feel them all you are you're just basically getting inundated with their information so it literally is a talking head it's a literally it's a talking head exactly and a talking head you know information is rampant nowadays yeah. we're inundated with information so we don't care about information as much as we care about how it's being delivered to us. Right. And can we connect to the person? And for me, I've noticed also, if somebody's blabbing so much information, it goes right over my head. I can't even understand it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's because I'm more kinesthetic. But uh, mm -hmm. it's true for most people that information is just like we've got too much of it. And so we want to feel the person. So the first thing is just really understanding that your information is going to be way more valuable. Mm -hmm. when you're connected to it, you yeah. know, and you're, and, and the thing is, is that when somebody is in their body, when they talk, your body receives the information. You don't have to just operate from your head. You're receiving a transmission. So it literally is me speaking from my heart to your heart, my gut to your gut. So it really is that embodiment. And it's why I know you've loved at our events that I have everybody doing lots of coloring and doodling because creatives do tend to be very kinesthetic. Yes. We need that physical processing of information that um, I'm the same way that I, I'm not great with audio input. It's yeah. overwhelming. I can't process it process it quickly enough. So right. uh, maybe that's why I struggle with video. You know, I tend to like audio and then I color while I listen to audio. So it's fascinating, this conversation about learning styles. Right. Yeah. Question about that. Awesome. I, so it kind of brings to mind questions about tactics uh, in terms of video. So we're talking about not just, or physically how you position your body. Uh, for those of you that are watching on YouTube, Michelle's standing up today. Yes. We're sitting down. Um, it, it makes a difference. Um, so I'm interested in, in tactically the length of information. That, I mean, you talk about information overload. So people need to think about the length of their videos. Mm -hmm. They need to think about what's behind them. We have, you know, some folks that are sitting, that we interview on the podcast sitting on their desk and they, they position their latest novel behind them. Um, you we know. did one earlier today, the same day we're recording yours, that she actually had her banner behind her because it yes. just did, wanted to find this space and gave everybody just right. more visual information to look at. Whereas so. and what Michelle's got today, this pretty batik print behind her. So color is important uh, mm -hmm. and texture is important. Mm -hmm. And they're all things that you sort of maybe we don't think about, but they, right. they change how people um, – interpret the information right and I guess a, finally I would ask about also just positioning the content are, you, are we positioning ourselves as a leader as a thought leader are we positioning ourselves as a, a wise guide as a teacher mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm interested in any of those types of things that our, our listeners could could use uh, tactically right. yes yeah, so so great great bringing up the the whole visual of the delivery because it is important also um, it doesn't ha you don't have to spend a lot of time and effort on it, but it's something that you want to, like, for example, you guys have these beautiful paintings in the background. Yeah, and I'm looking going, it's, is it too busy? It is pretty busy. <laughs> um, it's, it's a tad busy, but you get away with it because it's in the background mm -hmm. and it's kind of fun and you guys are in the foreground yeah. and it, it's a different thing that like, I'm right up against this thing. Right. It isn't ideal. Um, having well, it looks great. Oh, I'm glad you like it. It's it's actually fabric, and I painted it, and oh, very nice layers. And your closet's it. behind, so what a great way to make great use of your space, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And it's something that I can just leave up and do really quickly. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yes, the visual is really important. Not to ha have it be too 
distracting from you. Mm-hmm. Right. That's the thing. It's, and that goes down to clothing as well. Yeah. Um, but it's not something that I get, like I like to do most of my videos outside actually. I just feel like I'll feel better and the, the beauty of the greenery. And I like to move around with the selfie stick and that creates en- engaging like a background that's moving around basically. Yeah. Right. So that, that's one of the tricks that I think is really fun to use. Um, and to also be standing kind of off center is visually more interesting for somebody's eye. Yeah. And of course, if you do editing, a little bit of editing can help where you can move around in the frame oh, I see. Um, with the editing, you know, um, those are some of the visual things that you were talking about. Um, but in terms of the embodiment, I wanted to just go back to your question, Minette, also is for people to really get that feeling their nervousness before they make a video or whatever they're feeling is going to connect them to themselves. Yeah. And it's going to just drop a bunch of like spinning head thoughts. And that's like the simplest thing you can do is to just feel what you're actually feeling in the moment. Like if there's nervousness, where do you feel it? Is it tightness in your, your, you know, I feel it right, you know, in my solar plexus often, yeah. what am I feeling right in this moment? Yeah. And then once you actually, it's like saying I'm nervous to myself and just, oh, I'm nervous. Oh, okay. I can still make a video. And do you dance yeah. or stretch or do anything physically to yes. kind of get some of those jitters out before you start the video? I do. I really like to do like movement where it's fast and crazy and I just get like get out of a pattern and break up the patterning and just move that energy but then there's a way where if you do too much of that you're kind of throwing your energy around so I also like to get really grounded and press into a wall or in the floor and start to feel my muscles Mm. and that gets me like into my power Mm. I don't know if you can feel I that. Can I can feel, feel it. It feels like very sensual, like root chakra. I can really yes. feel that. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Right? And so when I talk, it's going to be far more, I'm going to follow through what I'm saying because all of my muscles are like, I'm not pressing too hard, but they're fully focused right now. And that mm. focuses my mind. Right. focused on the moment right now and what I'm talking about and that I'm connecting to the people watching the video. I so I actually those, have- are, those are such great tips about why being in your body is so important because it just increases that opportunity to connect. And as you and I know, connection matters more than anything. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. This is the way to connect to you. When you connect to your, see on video, it's different than talking to a live audience. Yeah. A live audience, you can focus on connecting to them. Right. And you right see there. both of each other. Exactly. You feel them. They feel you. There's, there's a connection. On video, it's kind of like there's nobody there. So how do you build that connection? And yeah. you build it by connecting to yourself. I love that. And then people can actually feel you and they feel like you're connecting to them. I have to share a a fun story about one of our colleagues, Patrice Perillo, who will often practice speaking to a room full of stuffed animals, right? (laughs) And so I love her picture. She posts them on Facebook. I'm not sharing anything out of turn, but she will put, you know, stuffed animals in chairs to sort of create that impact of having, you know, something to speak to. And it's just brilliant. That is hilarious. absolutely brilliant. And the pictures are hilarious. Oh my They're God, funny. I have to see those. That's so fun. But so it's let's brilliant. talk about technology. Here I am with my happy little iPhone. I admit I'm an iPhone junkie, but for anybody with a smartphone, yes. What are there's a, I know a couple of things that you shared that are really important when you're getting started from a technology perspective. In addition to your smartphone, what right. do I need to get started? So what you need to get started is you need to know that you need to shoot horizontally. Awesome. A lot Thank of people you. are shooting like this and getting black bars and a very thin, narrow image on the center, and it just doesn't look very good. Yeah, and that's from people like, especially on Facebook Live, trying to hold their phone vertically. And so even if you're using a selfie stick or a tripod to make sure that your phone is horizontal, not vertically. Exactly. Okay. That's sort of the very basic. And then the next thing to train yourself is to, and I don't, oh, hang on one second. I want to show you something that will help. Um, 
So Michelle, if you're listening to the podcast, is walking around looking for something to oh, show us on, on well, video. So she'll, there she is. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. I couldn't find it. I forgot. So the, the next thing to do is to train yourself to look into your camera, which is the little circle to the left. So, it's the, so if you're listening, not watching, it's a little circle at the top of your phone to the left, top left of your case, right? Yeah, when you turn the phone sideways, the camera is now to the far left. It's at the little dots on the far left. And the speaker's on the bottom of your phone. Yes. But what you really need to be doing is looking into that little camera. And one thing I do is I put a little happy face above it. If I'm having trouble, my eyes keep going back into this image here. And nice. you can make a, a little piece of cardboard over the, the, land, the, 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 the viewer here, the, the screen, and put a piece of tape and lift it up to make sure the framing is right. And then put it down if you're really distracted by seeing yourself. Because if you look into the phone and see yourself your eyes are going to be off they won't be looking directly out that's brilliant and it's really important to start training yourself to get comfortable just like i do this exercise with people where i just have them pretend it's they're they're doing a tantric breathing exercise or they're just breathing and looking into the lens so you're reprogramming yourself to be comfortable to look right. at a camera. It's not something we're all trained to do. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and it, it makes a, a big tip. difference. And you can, you can tell with people on the webcam as well, on their computer, uh, where they're looking at, I mean, your tendency, mine is, you look at yourself on the video, right? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And you're not looking at the camera, and then your eyes, it's not, engaged, it's not an engaging visio, video because the person on the other side yeah. isn't making eye contact with you. Totally, exactly. So those are sort of the three sort of areas of, First, just getting used to and acclimated to filming yourself. The next thing you can do is um, have a way to not have to hold the, f the phone, because you can do videos holding it, but it's a lot easier for yourself to move your arms and be in your whole body if you don't have to hold the phone. So there are different tripods. You know, there's these little cute Joby tripods. Yeah, that, those are nice. Right? They can just you click it on here and it can, you can just put it down, but make sure that you're always looking at eye level in the phone. Like nice. looking down like this, you're going to get this double chin or uh, up, here yes. up here isn't so bad. Actually the phone you above you does side a lot. I've noticed with your selfie stick, yes. you often have it above you looking up at it. Exactly. I like actually the the high angle is fun too. Yeah. So those are sort of the technical things that you need to know to get started. It's really not that much to do other than learning how to then upload it directly to your YouTube channel, which you can do straight from the phone. Which even or, that's really simple. It's just a couple of clicks of a button these days, right? Exactly. And, and then there's, you can edit on your iPhone as well if you want to. Yeah, the newer, the newer video stuff, you can, you can yeah. mess with it. You can chop frames out and all sorts of stuff. So yeah, it's pretty it's, neat. It's pretty handy if you, you know, don't want to make 30 versions of a video because you keep messing something up. Yeah. You can actually just redo that one area that you keep messing up and then edit that pretty simply. I have a video where it shows you how to edit really simply on the iPhone. So we have, I, I think we go through through three struggles that maybe you could comment on. Um, one is, well, I guess one's not a struggle. What we found was that, um, and we have uh, iPhone 6, I guess. The video quality on the iPhone was just far and away better than what we were getting off of our, you know, old three, digital three, video three camera. Old video camera. Right. Um, so we, like it was a struggle, but we just, we figured, we can get way better, beautiful looking video, high def video off of the, the iPhone. It wasn't even worth using the old video camera. Right. Um, so that, I guess we got past that struggle. The other ones are always lighting and sound level. Okay, um, great, yes. Thank you for bringing those up actually. Those are really, really important. The, the lighting is, <clears throat> there's a really easy way to deal with lighting. So one technique that I teach people to do is to, do a test with the four different directions and just record and just look at yourself as you're videotaping yourself and then 
you know, go behind and go like this and then go like this. And you don't even have to think about where the sun is if you're outside, let's say. This is an outdoor technique. So the best one will be obvious. Right. Yeah. So just pick that direction to shoot in. If you're inside, <clears throat> unless you have professional lights, inside at night is going to be really hard. You've right. got to have one or two lights, two lights preferably that are coming at you 45 degrees out right. or 90 degrees out. Yeah, so, so you don't have shadows. So you don't have shadows. Right. And, you know, um, yeah. And then, or today I'm indoors and I've, I'm right by, next to a window. Us too. We're, we're the, there's a window right behind the computer, so the light is directly oh, in front of us. That's better. Now, I couldn't do it that way. That would probably be better if I did it that way, but um, I don't like that background over there. So <laughs> if I'm getting more light on this side of my face, we're kind of getting away with it today. <clears throat> yeah. So lighting is important, and you can tell right away if it's good enough just by looking in the phone. Right. Yeah. And, you, and when you have something to compare to, doing those four different directions, it's really easy to pick, okay, that's the best one. Yeah, that's a great tip. And, and then audio. Sorry? What about sound? Yeah, sound. Okay, so with sound, you can, there are these really cheap uh, lavaliers, um, the um, road lavalier is a great lavalier. And a lavalier is just a little wired mic that you can, clip onto you, a little microphone that clips on and then just plugs right into the phone. So I actually have one. Do you want me to show to you? Or? No, that's okay because most people okay. are listening, not watching, yeah. so it's fine. But yeah. one way, a cheaper way to do it is to just use your earbuds. That can be uh, an emergency microphone for you. Right, right. Where right. you just plug it in and you'll get much better sound because outdoors – you know, it's pretty noisy outside when you're out yeah. on the street, let's say. Right. Um, your the backyard, wind. the wind, you know, so you have to sort of keep the, the microphone nestled close to you. Yeah. So it doesn't get too much wind. And it's really good when audio is, you're not sure about the audio, always do a test. Right. And right. then play it back through your headphones, your, your earbuds, and see if it's too noisy. And remember that as long as we can hear you, even if there's a lot of noise in the background, you know, if you're in a location where it's really noisy, it doesn't mean you shouldn't make the video. Yeah, I noticed I was at a conference on Saturday and the host of the conference had everybody was doing, you know, partner shares and she was up at front doing a video, right? So everybody was in the background talking, but it was part of the video because everybody was participating in these exercises and she's up there talking. And so it was a great way to showcase what was happening at her event without being uh, interruptive or distracting, right? It was, you know, but sometimes you get these videos, people are sitting in coffee shops, right? Yes. And even with the headphones on, it's so hard to hear them. Is it? Okay. So there you go. Those little headphones are not good enough in those coffee shops because you do Depending hear. Depending on, I guess it's what the intention of the video is as well. Like if you're just doing a Facebook live from a coffee shop, it's probably fine. If you can hear them, it, it's, it's okay. Yeah. Yes, you're right. Facebook Live, you're more forgiving. Exactly. Yeah. But a static video uh, that's going to be just there forever and ever, it's not ideal to have that amount of noise in the background. Right. Uh, right. Unless you're doing something really fun and exciting, you just want to show a, a snippet of it, you know? Like, yeah, paragliding or something. Exactly. I mean, you know, there's... <laughs> Where did you come up with that? Because one of my friends is coming to visit while uh, she's here paragliding. So it was the first thing that came into my mind, which seems like it's it. really noisy when you... The sound of the wind when you jump off a cliff. Right. But I mean, that footage is going to be amazing and so good for her brand that yeah. it's so worth doing. Yeah, totally. I love that. And, and I was thinking um, when people do the... Um, in the tops of the trees when they go back and forth, you know, the between the zip lines. Zip lines. Zip line. Oh, yeah, I've got to lines. do that. I have got to make a video doing that. I've I've done videos riding a bicycle up a hill, you know, in a swimming pool, acro yoga. I love doing them in fun places because that just shares more of me and people get to know me in a way that is accelerated yeah. more so than just me talking about business all the time. 
Right. I love that. Like, yeah. And I, I so appreciate that about you because I can talk about business all the time and you remind me that there's more fun to have in life, which, you know, I, so I'd love for you to share because I think it's so clever. One of the ways that you're sort of putting your brand and your visibility out there off video is that you've created one of the most, um, the unique ideas for networking that I've heard of in a long time. Would you share about your meetup? Thank you. Yes, my meetup is called Outdoor Networking. So that what we do is we, I get to pick like a fabulous place to meet, like a hiking location. And I want to do a different one every time so that I am having fun and I am expanding my, you know, my pleasure by being out in nature. And then we will, we partner two in pairs and we get to know each other as we're hiking. That's so brilliant. Great idea. Thank you. And people are more comfortable talking side by side than face to face often as well. So it takes some of the um, nervousness out of networking for people that are a little more shy and yes. aren't comfortable in rooms or more facilitated networking. So I, I think it's so brilliant. And for those of you that are listening that are in LA, it's based in the Los Angeles area. So you can yes. look up Michelle Whitehart on Meetup, and you will find her with her outdoor networking group there. And Michelle, so we're wait, just- Wait, wait, you need oh. to Facebook Live that. Yeah. Yes, I do. That's I, cool. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it'd be very cool to do a Facebook Live from there. I love the one you did. Um, so if uh, you can go on, go look up Michelle on Facebook as well, and go see the one about the coyote, and that's all I'm going to say <laughs> about what she learned from a young <gasps> coyote. You. So that was a, a really fun one. So tell us a little bit about how people can get to know you better, connect with you online, and I know you have an awesome free gift on your website that they can go and download as well, right? Absolutely, yes. Uh, currently, my free gift, because uh, <laughs> they change, um, is uh, three playful steps to increase your visibility. And it's not always, you know, if video is too terrifying, well, there's ways to build up your, your visibility muscles and your ability to be seen mm -hmm. that you can do in your daily life. And they're fun ways to get more comfortable being seen and, and receiving attention and they really will help um, getting comfortable on video much like it's a more organic thing for you when you start realizing how many opportunities you already are uh, in front of to be seen out in public so that's at michellewhiteheart.com and there's also part of that um, free gift is a template on how to make videos that uh, share one nugget of your content that solves one problem of your ideal clients. And it's a structure that really helps you start thinking in terms of problem and solution so that your videos are really effective for your ideal clients who are looking for the solutions that you offer. I love that. That's so clear, so simple. We talk about that from the marketing perspective all the time, that marketing is simply about solving problems for people. And I love what you said about using your videos to solve one problem and not feeling like you have to solve all of the problems because that's where you get the information overload. Exactly. So again, that's at Michelle Whiteheart, and Michelle is M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E. W H I T E H A R T dot com. <laughs> we'll share it all in the in the show notes. But two L's in Michelle and no E in the heart. And so very good. I know, right? And just yes. making sure that we we get that out there for people that are interested and excited to get more visible online. Michelle, thank you so much for your time today. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you so much, Brad and Minette. Thanks, Michelle. We had a blast today on the Path to Profit yeah. podcast, <laughs> all about being visible on video. Get yourself, get, get in front of a camera, go record yourself yeah. and show, show the world who you are and, and what you bring to the world. Have a blast. See ya. <laughs>